Hi, I'm John from Strings by Mail, and I'm here to talk about changing strings specifically on a classical guitar. Hopefully you saw our overview video for changing strings that helps you to organize yourself so it's quick and easy. 15 minutes is about what it should take at the most. Possibly 20 if you don't do it very frequently. The guitar is on a nice surface. It's soft. It's protected. I've got a headstock stand here. And the first thing I want to do is loosen these strings up. So this headstock stand, this Dunlop, has a flat side. So I can take the guitar, turn it over, and expose the pegs to where I can quickly and easily wind these down. So there are a lot of different kinds of winder. This is a nice wood one, but we have quite a few models around. So I put this on here, and I can quickly and easily get the tension off that string. Now as a guitarist, if I want to save my hands, which I generally do, I might use an electric model. So this little Ernie Ball unit goes right on the string, and without any strain on my hands, and very quickly, I've got that thing loosened down, and I'm ready to take it off of there. Now, I like these units. They're small, they're light. I think they're worth every penny. But so are these, and there are a lot fewer pennies. If you've already got an electric drill, you can put this on any drill and do the same thing. Having loosened the string, the next thing I'm going to do is bring out my wire cutter, flip the guitar over. Now, I would have loosened all of them at once because you want to save time, batch your activities together. But for a short video, we're only changing one string. So I'm going to take this wire cutter, I'm going to snip that string, which means now I can easily get this piece off and I'm going to use my bridge bib to protect the guitar's face during these kind of activities so it doesn't get poked by a string or by a wire cutter. And then I'm going to come up here and I can just push that string on through because I don't tie these strings off with a knot. We'll show you how I put them on so they come off more easily. So at this point, we're about to try the tricky part of changing classical guitar strings, tying the string. To make this a little easier for you to see, I'm going to take the guitar out of the way and we're going to use a large demo unit to mimic the headstock of the guitar or rather the bridge tie block of the guitar. I've got a string here, not a guitar string, but I think it can represent what we're doing. It's not that hard, it's just you want to know the basic trick, which is you're coming in through that hole from the headstock of the guitar, and you come back around and go underneath the string. And with a bass string, you could probably get away with one wind but if you want to feel more secure, you can do two winds. But the trick is, one wind or two, the last wind has got to end below the edge of the tie block so that as tension is put on the string, it holds itself tight. Now, if I'm working with a treble string, I would do always two ties at least, and maybe a third, especially if I'm working with a lighter weight string, like a first string that's made out of carbon is going to be real light. At that point, I'm going to need that third wind to go around there and hold it tight. And if I'm extra cautious, I might even put a little knot in the end of that string just to make sure a very thin first carbon string doesn't slip or some other very light gauge first string, occasional second strings can slip. So the knot in that case is your safety. But we're going to want to show it to you on a real guitar too. So I'm bringing the guitar back, putting it up on the headstock stand, get my string ready,
Now I'm going to come up here. Here's a real important start. Have the hole in the barrel vertical. Then you can come straight down through. Come back around. And again, there are different ways to approach this. But if you let the string wind over itself, so I come around underneath the string, I went down through, I came up over the back of the barrel, further towards the end of the headstock, came under the string, and now, if I pull that string back and give it a little crimp, and I've got very little slack here, then that string is going to hold, because I'm going to immediately turn by hand until that string is well cinched till that hole is now either horizontal or almost vertical again I've kept the tension on that string so that string is in place it's not going anywhere at this point I would continue that process because remember we want to do everything each step all together but since we want to make a nice short comfortable video to show this to you we're now going to go to the assuming we've got all the strings put on then we're going to end up turning the guitar back over and I'm going to end up bringing back out my Ernie Ball winder and I'm going to tighten that baby up. Get myself to where I'm probably pretty well along. At this point, I'm down at this end of the guitar. I've got all these strings on. I'm going to go ahead and do them all at once and for any of them that stick below, coming upward, which in my case most of them are going to end up that way, I take care of clipping them off. I flip my guitar back over, get these tools out of my way, put the bridge bib back on because now I'm going to take this tool and get it near the face of the guitar. So I'm going to want to have some good protection. Soft side down on the bridge bib. And then I'm going to clip that string off right up next to the edge. So at this point, if we batch it all together, we took them all from loosening them all here first, clipping them all down here, sliding them all out, going back up here, sliding them all out, coming back down here, tying them all, coming back up here, getting them all tied off, Flip it over, get a little tension on all of them, flip it back over, clip my strings off, and I'm ready to tune up. And here's where we have that unique situation for the classical guitar. When these things are getting tuned back up, if you don't keep right at it in the first hour, you can have a couple of days of unpleasant stretching strings. But if you stay right on top of this, and you play the guitar a lot in that first hour, and you have a point of reference, you either leave one string for the old set on as a trick, and that'll force you to keep tuning up to that or pay attention to your ear have a tuner right on your music stand and keep stopping every time you hear things dropping and bringing each string up to what the tuner tells you is pitch then you can in about an hour get most of your stretch out and then as long as every time you happen to think of it during the rest of that day and you're near the guitar you open it up and tune it up to pitch by the next day you'll be in pretty good shape we've covered everything now except what if you have a 12 hole bridge so let's take the guitar away here one more time and let's get our mock-up of a 12-hole bridge on deck and let's just briefly talk about 12-hole bridges. The point of a 12-hole bridge is it puts more downward force on the saddle which makes the guitar a little louder, a little more responsive. So here's our normal tying situation. Take a look. The string is coming out of this hole and wound around itself and kind of pulling up against itself. It's breaking the angle to the saddle. So it's softer, which means not as much force on the saddle. So this is where the 12-hole bridge comes into play. Because the 12-hole bridge is designed to minimize that problem. So over here you'll see pairs of holes, low, high, low, high, low, high. You're going to use, and the luthier is going to line up the low hole to be over the appropriate spot on the saddle. And so you're going to come in through the low hole first, bring the string over the top, now come through the adjacent higher hole, 
And as you get to the other side, I'm going to turn this so you can tell what's going on here, you're going to go underneath that string. That's going to hold it in place. If you've got a bass string, that's plenty of tension with the windings giving friction for that string to stay in place. If you've got a treble string, you'll probably want to play it safe and go around a second time underneath itself so there's more tension there. And that's how you use a 12-hole bridge. They are becoming more popular because of what they do for the sound of the guitar. I think we've covered it all. Once again, we at Strings on Mail will always be ready to help you out. Give us a call, send us an email, and we've got the finest guitar strings possible. <laughs>